The outside world is made up of all real and virtual contexts that are not structurally part of the institution within which our course is placed, but that can contribute effectively to the teaching and learning experience. The outside world could bring lifeblood to the teaching and learning activities we are designing and which are meant to produce and transfer knowledge. It's a smart possibility we consider if we want to innovate a course. Regarding this topic, the main issue are what kind of contribution we need to integrate in our network and how. It's not so easy to be aware of all the possibilities offered by the external world in terms of actors that can be integrated in our network. Content circulating within it. Activities proposed to students. And channels to support the process. To organize information and ideas, let's go back to the quadrup helix model, a systemic interpretation that builds upon the better known triple helix. The quadruple helix involves the collaboration between universities, industry, government and society with the aim of producing innovation. These are precisely the elements that could be integrated within our learning innovation network and that could contribute in terms of actors, content, channels and activities. For example, regarding the external actors to be integrated in the network, we could mention corporate testimonials, experts on a specific research topic, teaching staff from other universities. These are just a few examples of the actors we could integrate in the teaching and learning experience. They could support the achievement of specific intended learning outcomes providing an alternative point of view or going deeper into the subject. Regarding the contents, the outside world offers huge possibilities that can be exploited both through physical or digital channels. For example, the massive open online courses offer a huge amount of structured digital contents. They are delivered both by universities, government, industries and civil society and their number is constantly growing. We can freely access both uh, broader and shorter courses delivered by various MOOC providers. And one of the possibilities is also to integrate even a small part of their content within our course. Regarding the integration of open online content in the teaching and learning experience, another possibility is offered by institutions that deal with enhancing the cultural heritage. Several institutions are opening up and spreading outside the big amount of knowledge they gather. The acronym GLAM, Galleries, Libraries, Archives and Museums, was coined in the Anglo-Saxon world at the beginning of the 2000s, and it refers to these institutions. For example, the Rijks Museum is an expression of this innovative, collaborative and shared approach for the conservation and the dissemination of the cultural heritage. So, there are various possibilities for integrating the contents in the Learning Innovation Network. It is important to understand how the content taken from the external world can become part of a wealth of resources and offer effective support. For example, they could be very useful during a lecture to bridge some gaps or to provide further details or they could facilitate experimentation while supporting a blended learning approach. To integrate external activities in our teaching and learning experience, we could leverage on competitions organized by companies and research foundations for the solution or scouting of innovative ideas. The participation of young people and students in this competition is often welcome or even requested. A specific example of this competition are hackathons, convention of experts, mainly from the IT sector. The hackathons can last a few days and the aim is to devise and select tech and digital solutions in a favorable and competitive environment. The participation in activities offered from the external world requires to act in a context that differs from the educational or academic world. This could be very useful for students, for example, to support the development of different soft skills. 
even in terms of chance supporting the teaching and learning experience, the outside world offers various digital tools that properly support the interaction among the nodes in the Learning Innovation Network. But when talking about channels, we must not forget physical channels. We should not underestimate the effectiveness of experiencing physical spaces outside of the university. A few examples of the possibility we can explore are laboratories within specific contexts, practical activities carried out in the field, company visits, and so on. Shifting the experience from a usual classroom environment allows both for a deeper immersion in the object of the study and research and an interruption to the habitual progress, with a consequential increase in motivation and focus. Integrating the external world in our teaching and learning experience, so in our learning innovation network, could be quite an effort. One of the possibilities could be to involve all the nodes of the learning innovation network in activating their external contacts. For example, students could be asked to select and propose digital external contribution, whether content or tools. This could lead to a greater involvement in the course activities or even to co-planning the course itself with students. We could use individual contributions that are not perfectly integrated within the course as additional and optional activities, in-depth analysis and supplementary materials. This could help to go beyond what was designed by the teacher designer. Music